Uh, all right. Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to another episode of the Remarkable Coach Podcast. As always, I am your host, Michael Pacheco. And today with me, I have for the second time for an encore presentation, uh, which we've been doing a lot uh, lately these days on the Remarkable Coach, Maureen McKinnon. Um, so a little bit about Maureen. She has been inspiring, coaching, teaching, and mentoring current and future leaders for over 20 years. Uh, her mission is to help more talented women gain leadership roles to balance gender equity in corporate leadership. She helps talented women get promoted and make more moolah. Maureen, welcome back to The Remarkable Coach. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. I really appreciate the time to spend with you again. Yeah. Uh, and you on what's been happening with the mission and what's been happening with my business. Um, so well, I'm really thrilled. I'm honored that I've been nominated for the 31st annual Royal, Can Royal Bank Canada Canadian Woman Entrepreneur Awards. I'm a nice. finalist. That's yeah. amazing. Thank you. Thank you. My best friend recommended me, nominated me actually, and she's a branch manager for RBC on Vancouver Island. And the award I'm going for is Social Change Award mm -hmm. with a regional impact. So super, super cool. Yes. So the the finalists will be announced in September. And then there's an awards gala in Toronto. So I think there'll be a thousand people at the gala awards. So nice. that's fun. Yes. And when when is the awards gala? November twenty second. November. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, you know, by November, you may be able to to uh, celebrate uh, a, a, a belated uh, Maple Leaf Stanley Cup. <laughs> <laughs> they made it. They made it to round two. Finally. <laughs> yes, they did. They did. We've got the Maple Leafs and we've got the Oilers in. Yep. So we're My all money's on the Oilers. Hey, My money's on the Oilers. Yes, that's most of my family. <laughs> One of my brothers in Alberta. So yes, we're all behind the Oilers. Um, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Tell us about the the award here. Is there is there voting? Where, where can our viewers and listeners go and and maybe cast a vote for you? Is it limited to Canadians only? Can can as us down as, in the south do it? As, as far as I know, it's um, it's an internal elimination kind of competition. I don't have access to voting that I've been made aware of yet. Um, of course, when I do, if that's a possibility, I will be broadcasting it far and wide and loud. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely reach out to to me and Kevin both, or just one of us really, and we'll yeah. let the other one know. And we'll get that uh, listed on the show notes page. We'll put a link up on, on the show notes page for this. Sure. Um, Super. So yeah, so for those uh, listening and watching, Maureen was uh, on an episode. I don't have the episode number in front of me, but it was the one released on November 9th, 2022. So not really, not too terribly long ago. Um, so if you haven't had a chance yet, uh, definitely uh, I recommend you go back and take a listen to that first episode there. Um, I know on that episode, we, we Maureen shared a lot about what she did uh, with, with corporate women wanting promotions, um, you know, businesses with women managers, that sort of thing. Um, Maureen, why don't you, why don't you go tell us a little bit more about yourself and what it is you do um, in your own words for those of our listeners and viewers that have, haven't had a chance yet to listen to that first episode. Okay, so I, as you mentioned in the beginning, I have been mentoring and coaching um, current leaders and future leaders for over 20 years. So I've been working with both men and women, but in the last five years in particularly, I've focused on helping women to get promotions and making more money as a way to help solve the inequity that un the, in the gender balance in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. I realized that was a problem and the way I could help was by helping more women get into leadership roles and reach those board members and stuff. So I do two things. I do it through my business, working with clients, and I also do it through my volunteer work. So I'm um, currently the Vancouver chapter co-chair for the Women in Leadership Foundation. Mm -hmm. And I also have sat on the National Advisory Board for the Women Economic Council of Canada. And um, as such, I've helped organize and either moderate or be a speaker at several different women organization events mm -hmm. uh, in the last year. 
or even since November. So one of them I've did was I helped support a student, female student initiative from Langara College. It's called Empowering Diversity in Technology. Mm-hmm. And we did an event in March, uh, March 16th, where we had a panelist of women who wanted to talk about how do we empower women in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and uh, math. Mm-hmm. So one of our panelists was Kelsey Priest, who is a senior structural engineering woman. And she not only is a role model inside her organization at Glockman Simpson Consulting Engineers, but she co-founded Women in Consulting Engineers because she was the only role model in her company. And she started talking to other women in the field and discovered there wasn't anything. So she decided to start one. Mm -hmm. An association. So that started in 2018 and she, they now have 500 members. Nice. Amazing. That's great. Yes. And then we also, and one of the other panelists was Lauren Kelly, who is the director of sector transformation division. She's working with technology companies with regard to uh, challenges and obstacles for um, indigenous individuals, because mm-hmm. she works at the first nations technology council. Mm-hmm. So they're trying to bring the the that break open the whole thing about techno the technology industry and working with men and women who are uh, First Nations you know Indigenous, um, and then we also had Rochelle Grayson who's well known in the technology industry here in Can- in Vancouver. She's also an alumni, a Langara alumni college professor. She's a digital executive and strategist, and she just launched. The Mosaic Accelerator, which is an early stage accelerator for non-technical Black, Indigenous, Latin, Asian, non-technical women, Middle Eastern, transgender, women with disabilities, and immigrant women, the whole thing. And wow. she, she just <laughs> launched that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, right at the end of May, April, uh, and it's to help these women build technology-enabled ventures. Mm-hmm trying to get people to open up because you don't necessarily have to be a technological person, meaning you don't have to code or write write um, software or stuff to be involved in technology because sure. it's still a business. Sure. So there's all the roles that any other business needs. And it's also whatever your service and product promotes, what is the end user getting? Mm-hmm. And so this is how do, how do we enable technology, especially with all the discussion about AI right mm-hmm. going on yeah so it's a way to help other women women think in bigger product in a, a bigger raw broader range of, of entrepreneurship mm-hmm. and help get into businesses uh and then also in march we also did a women in leadership event which was speed coaching speed career coaching mm-hmm. so we had an audience of women who had access to three professional coaches one was vita thompson and she's a professional resume, cover letter, and interview person. Cool. Uh, that's what she helps people do. Then we had Jana, Janice Porter, who's a specialist in LinkedIn profiles. Mm-hmm. Because if you're looking for a job, people are going to check you out on LinkedIn, see who you are. 100%. <laughs> Absolutely. And then I also did the talking with women about the promotions and how you have to gain credibility and increase your visibility in the organizations, which we had talked about before, so that people know who you are, what you can do, and then they can promote you because they now know who you are and what you do. Mm-hmm. Kind of idea. Uh, and then we have the women in the emerging women in technology, the empowerment of diversity in technology. We did an event. This is with the Langara College students also, uh, and that was the one I was talking to you about with three panelists, Mm -hmm. they're planning on having a second uh, event. The idea is to help grow the conversations about what's happening with how we empower women in STEM. So they're gonna have a new, a different event, which is more about getting senior leaders in the same room to have like a fireside chat or kitchen table talk Mm -hmm. uh, so that we can see if we can expand the conversations going on in other, throughout the tech industry to help Mm -hmm. women. So that's all very exciting, I'm happy to say. Very cool. And, <laughs> well, I'm trying to live up to this, 
social change award. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds to me like like uh, like it's uh, it's going to be an easy decision. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. Um, well, it's I've discovered that I know enough people in the technology from the work I've been doing to be able to bring these kinds of people together and help launch these conversations and help move them along, make the ripple effect, because it's very timely, obviously, there's a lot of discussion about DE and I and AI and what's happening. So there's, it's really, I think, time, it's like, I really feel it's a relevant time that can help launch these conversations. Um, and in my private business, in my coaching business, um, it's been interesting. There's a lot more activity going on. In mm -hmm. fact, yesterday I had three different, I had seven meetings yesterday. It was crazy, yeah. but three of those were with clients and they were all interview prep. They've all got interviews for this week. Mm -hmm. So one has an interview for a, a role in Switzerland, which mm -hmm. is very easy, interesting to talk about what's happening in Europe. Um, I have another one who's got three job interviews this week. Wow. Yes. Uh, and then the other one is to, the, the other one was just had an uh, had an interview was expecting a second one, and in addition to the three that I was working with it with interview prep, I have two expecting job offers. So uh -huh. it's a very fabulous time. So um, that's amazing. What what do you think? Um, is is there something that you can point to that might be responsible for all this change and movement that seems to be happening this spring? Um, well, I think part of it is that there, of course, employers are still wrestling with back to work, mm -hmm. you know, on site working, sure. uh, you know, trying to re deal with, you know, remote work. The reality is that we all worked remotely for two and a half plus years. So it's not, you can't really say it didn't work. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, your business wouldn't survive. And I think they're surprised at how much pushback there is from individuals who really like remote work and don't want to have to con uh, commute anymore kind yeah. of idea. Um, I think some of the companies also laid off a bunch of people and I don't think they necessarily understood that probably that some of those people they needed. Mm -hmm. And so now they're realizing after having let many people go that there were some people in there they needed. So now mm -hmm. they're looking to hire, rehire those positions. Mm -hmm. um, and in some cases, they have actually gone back to the individuals and said, sorry, whoops, sorry. <laughs> you know, we didn't actually need you and you're very good at what you do. Come back, come back home. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there has been awesome. some of that going on. Um, and I think that people mm -hmm. are, um, if, you, if you're confident in yourself and know that you are professional and, and you know what you bring to an organization, it's so much easier to look out, to look at job postings, talk to your network about what's out there and actually get what it is you want to do. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference is I think the people that I'm working with, we're looking at job search differently. We're, called, we're a little bit more pro, what I call proactive. Mm -hmm. So we don't just look at the job postings that are out there we look for the companies that were you that have the role that you want mm -hmm. and then how do we find someone in the inside that company that you know or someone you know knows so that you have access prior to the job posting even get it posted mm -hmm. that you get to actually interview with somebody at the company about what it's like to work there and generally what happens is they will take your resume and bring it to the person who makes the decisions and people in employers particularly still make the decision that they like to hire people that they know and like and have been recommended over strangers. Yeah. 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 It's an interesting topic. I think I've, I've had this, this conversation with a number of leadership and executive coaches in the past, Oh, past couple months about the, um, you know, this, this, uh, this hot button topic, I guess, of, of, of coming back into, you know, a, a, an office essentially. Right. And, and right. maybe the hybrid workplace and, and people, <laughs> employers, leaders getting a little bit of pushback on that because as it turns out, it's real nice to work from home. You know, if assuming that you have a happy home life, it's nice to work from home with your spouse. You know, maybe your kids are hanging around, you're working in your jammies. If you're getting all your work done, mm -hmm. there's no harm in that. 
Um, and and one of the one of the po- points that that I had brought up in in a previous remarkable coach podcast with another coach who who we were talking we were discussing this is that I think especially for creative teams there is something to be missed from the energy of being in the same room together. Yes. And and there's and that's 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 going to be an interesting balance to find for companies that are heavily leveraged in the creative space somehow. Correct. Correct. Um, although I think I think that there has been more discussion with regard to hybrid mm-hmm. in that the hybrid could only could also be we bring people in once a month. Mm-hmm. We bring people in once a quarter. Mm-hmm. We fly them somewhere because now there's more there's more opportunity again to open up and bring people together again. Like there's more conferences happening again now and stuff like that. For um, sure. So mm-hmm. I think that might be a way for a company to do that with their mm-hmm. creative ones. And of course, if they're if they claim to be global, their teams are already in different countries. So you know that's not quite the same dis- discussion because you decided to go global and you have all these teams that you put together from different countries and places so Mm -hmm. that's sort of um a moot point from that perspective (laughs) well even yeah i mean with global stuff like i've i've got my team at boxer is we're a distributed team we're global there's a few of us in the pacific northwest of the united states um and then we've got you know people as far away as 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 pakistan full-time employees as far away as pakistan and philippines um and one thing that i would like to start doing we haven't started doing it quite yet but something that i would like to start doing is is getting people together um you know once a year for some kind of retreat um and it's just a team building right a culture thing culture is a bit uh, can be can be difficult to um to build uh i think remotely as well i would agree with that i believe yeah. in i believe that interaction uh, and building relationships has a lot to do with having the chance to talk to someone face to face, get a better sense of who they are and who you are and how you can work together. Um, and I think people, when you go globally, that people think differently in different countries because of the corporate culture or because of the culture of their or their company, their, their country anyway. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's always eye opening when all of a sudden you realize that not everybody does it the way you do it or the way you've been experienced it, too which I think broadens the, the minds of the individuals also, which yeah. is always good. Um, I think the other thing about the home, working from home is that we had a lot of um, younger professionals move away from the downtown core in Vancouver to not only just into the lower mainland, but they actually went into the interior, the Okanagan, because mm-hmm. they could they could buy a home there where they didn't see that happening here. So now yeah. all of a sudden, if you call them back from work, they don't live 30 minutes from the office anymore. They live five hours from the office. So now what are you going to do? Right. Cause no. that's a skill set that you needed. Um, and some, uh, and then there's the discussion is about the employers who think that if you're going to be living in those locations away from the big cities, we shouldn't have to pay you as much, which is a really dicey topic for yeah. an to, to uh, try to justify. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting one. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I can see that. I mean, that's 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 literally what my family did. What 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 I did during, um, during COVID, we bought thirty acres in the Washington State Cascades and built a big house completely off grid. You know, we're we're forty five minutes from the closest town, um, let alone the city. <laughs> the city's even further away. So it's like, you know, without without Starlink, um, yeah. God bless Elon Musk and, and Starlink. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't have any internet. Um, but yeah, I mean, you you do what you can. It's an interesting topic. Um, it is. It is. Yeah. yeah. Well, Maureen, is there is there anything uh, anything else that that you would like to to chat about that we haven't had an opportunity to touch upon yet? Anything else that's new? I know it sounds like you got a ton going on uh, <laughs> this spring. I can't imagine um, that you have a lot of free time on your hands. I want to definitely thank you for making time to chat with me today. <laughs> Well, I do have something else that I'm launching in my business as, as far as it's, I would, I've been, uh, well, I've been recruited over the years for, by several different companies, but one, because I spoke with you last time about wanting to maybe get into group coaching. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been recruited by what's called the tech 
the executive committee, GEC mm -hmm. Canada, to set up, uh, to build a group advisory, peer advisory group of entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. so, uh, for me, that's really exciting so that um, I would be the facilitator, I would be the, the organizer of the group, um, and then I would also be a one-on-one -on -one coach with the group. So we would meet every second month as far as the group goes, and then I would coach them each month. Cool. Um, I, yeah. The idea behind peer advisory is that if you get more minds together, more perspectives to share an issue or a challenge, or perhaps one of the entrepreneurs has already been through the challenge that you're going through, mm -hmm. um, you get more voices to make decisions from you as the entrepreneur than have, you know, 10 other people telling you what they think or what they believe experience. And you then get to take that away and make the decision yourself. So that's really exciting for me. Yeah, I love that. I mean, you're, it's essentially a mastermind, right? Or, a, you know, in yeah. each, each individual, each person that is, um, you know, a member of that group kind of has their own board of advisors, which is super, super helpful to have other, other brains um, with fresh ears and fresh eyes on, on your specific business problems. And then, of course, you get the opportunity to help all the others in the group. I think that's great. Yes. Yes. And my vision is to bring together a group of visionary doers, mm -hmm. people who are actually visionary leaders, but have have a track record of doing things to help solve problems in today's world and in the, in, in the future. Mm -hmm. And I've worked with several of them individually over the years, and now I'm trying to um, rope them all in to come together as a group and become a force. Mm -hmm. I love and, it. Thank you. I love it. That is fantastic. Um, Maureen, again, you know, thank you for, for making time to chat with me, little old me. Um, well, thank you, Michael, this has been great. I appreciate it. Yeah. Where can our listeners and viewers connect with you online? Obviously at LinkedIn through Maureen McKinnon, uh, online through Maureen at uh, McKinnon Executive Coaching dot com uh, and my website, McKinnon Executive Coaching. You can also go there and send me a message or book an appointment with me to talk awesome. about your career and what you'd like to do. Awesome. We'll get, uh, of course, we'll get all those links on our show notes page as well. Um, Maureen, for the for the third time, thank you so much <laughs> for making time in your busy schedule. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, let's let's catch back up again. If you hear anything about voting, definitely let us know. I will let you know. Absolutely. And we'll we'll thank add you. a link to the show notes page. Um, so yeah, other than that, yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. And I'll, I'll let you know what the end result is, of course, with regard to the competition and then my, my launch of my group. Awesome. Fantastic. Uh, thank you again. Thank you to our listeners and viewers. You guys are fantastic. Um, we will see y'all next time. Take care.